Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another painting tutorial. Today we are painting some terrain. Importantly, we're painting a lot of large terrain. Oh yes. <laughs> I have a couple of games coming up over the weekend and, well, I needed to get some buildings done pretty darn quickly. So today we're going to be painting the Battle Sanctum and we're going to be painting some of these slightly smaller bits as well to go with the rest of my terrain that I already have out there, including those bad boys, those wild woods, and some resin rocks from gamemap.eu. So we're going to be combining all of it together to create a really cool battlefield. And today we are going to be painting these majestic buildings. Now, they have been primed with Colour Forge Standard Grey. Yes, we've got new primers on the test here. This is part of what we're doing here is testing the new primers. We've got a really nice colour finish. It's very close to Mechanica Standard Grey, if not the same. They have been primed with Standard Grey, and then we've gone for a little bit of a white from Army Painter, matte white, just in certain areas. So we've got a little splodge of it just there. We've got a splodge of it just up there, over there on that corner. These ones, we've done the kind of tops just to create a little bit of variation across the buildings, as you can see. These ones I haven't done anything on. They were too small, didn't need to. So there we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our paints, we're gonna grab our brushes, and we're gonna get started painting some quick and dirty terrain that's gonna look absolutely fantastic. So hold on to your hats. So focus on, on these slightly smaller buildings first. What we're going to do is we're going to use a spot color. And we're going to start by kind of blocking in areas that we want to be different enough that they're going to look pretty cool once we get the last final dry brushes on. And also just add a little bit of visual interest because we don't want these to be a full, like the same color just all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and I'm going to fill it down with just a little bit of water. And I'm going to pick out some areas such as the doors and I'm going to pick out the floor as well with this color. So... This fin down and just like literally just created a big puddle of flesh terrors red and added just a little dash of water just to improve the flow now as i said previously i believe in the wildwoods video that i don't usually advocate using water on contrast paints but what we're going for is we're going for just a nice smooth application here uh, in terms of like the quality of the paint that's coming onto our brush uh, but we don't really need to worry too much about kind of a really kind of smooth finish on the model itself. Of course, we can do. We can use contrast medium here if you want. But for the sake of you know saving you a buck, just using a tiny, tiny little splodge of water there just to make it a little bit runny. Absolutely is justified. So I'm going to pick out this door like this. I'm not being 100% methodical in my application here, as you can tell. I'm just making sure that we're getting it all on there. Like, that, that looks pretty good to me. There we go. Similarly, I'm going to start adding this flesh terrace red onto the floor panels. Just like that. You don't need to worry about working it into the recesses, but of course you can if you want. For example, here, you can just smash it in. Like I said, we're going quick and dirty. Like that. So we're just gonna go over all of the areas that we want to be this color. I'm gonna do this window as well, I think. It 
So without Flesh Terror's red applied to the areas that we want to be red, inside and out, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Black Templar and we're going to apply this over any kind of mechanical details scattered around the model. Again, we're just creating a little bit of variation on the theme. So the buildings aren't too kind of uniform. So with that Black Templar applied, as you can see, to all the areas that I want to be, well, black, well, mechanical, I'll explain that in a minute. What we're going to do now is we're going to take some Nuln Oil and we are going to just slather this on all over our building. Now, Nuln Oil over the top of kind of white and grey looks awesome. <laughs> well, what you're going to get is you're going to get a very consistent shading across across both, but without kind of turning the whole thing quite dark. We get slightly different tone, for example, just here. Then you will over the top of our matte white or something like grey sear or you know, anything. So we're just going to take our time here. This is going to take a little while. This is the slowest part of the paint job. We do just want to get this absolutely everywhere. So with that null oil applied all over, you should have a building that looks somewhat like this. It already looks really, really, really cool, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of extra shading, a little bit of extra grime in there. And the two colors I'm gonna be using for this are Ethonian Camo Shade and Seraphim Sepia. Now what I've done is I've created two kind of piles of this on my palette. And I'm just basically just gonna grab my monster brush that I've been using for all of the shading. And just in sort of little areas, I'm just going to add little patches of this here and there. Kind of haphazardly. There's not really any kind of pattern here or any rhyme or indeed any reason. I'm just going for it.
this one left. So with that done, we've got our grime added in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a couple of metallic hints here and there with some, well, a metallic of your choice. Now I've gone with Castellax Bronze because I really like it. I think it's kind of, it's nice and dark, but it's also kind of, well, it's like a nice mid-tone metallic as it were. So I'm just gonna be picking out some of the really big features with it. So for example, this kind of, or what you'd call this, a wheel, a window, maybe. Something like that. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some wild wood and we're gonna apply this over the top just to make it nice and dark. So with that wildwood applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna dry brush the entire thing. Now the color we're gonna be using is Pallid Witch Flesh. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna very gently dry brush this over the top. Just like this. We're just wanting to catch all of those details all the way across the model. So here we have it then, folks. We've done that same thing across all of our buildings. So for example, here is the little one that we painted. It's looking pretty cool. So, got some slightly smaller ones just here and here. Got another medium sized building like that. And then, of course, we have the Battle Sanctum. So the only thing that's different about, oh God, this thing's huge. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that is different about these guys is that not only did I do the floors red, the inside walls, I also did red. Same Flesh Terror's red mix, or just Flesh Terror's red, with a bit of water, it's not really a mix. But there you go, that is all she wrote or is it because whilst we have some really really nice looking buildings with a bit of grime build up and this nice kind of dry brush all over that kind of really picks out all of the details and rivets and things 
there is a little bit more that we can do. And this is where the Battle Sanctum comes in, because this is a big, impressive building. And we basically want this to be the most visually interesting looking building on the battlefield. Because, well, I mean, look at it. It's so big. <laughs> it's so, so big. It's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> look at this thing. Let's see. Here is a here is a warp spider. <laughs> Look at that. So, what we're going to do? I'm going to move the warp spider. I'm going to add a little bit of battle damage to our building. Uh, we can do this on the other ones, although I'm probably not going to do it on these little ones because. Well, it doesn't really need it. They're small enough that actually they're already really visually interesting. So it's just on this big guy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our paint and we're gonna grab our brush and we're back in just one second. This thing is in fact so big that it actually lives inside the camera. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna oh, re remove half of it and we're just gonna put this one, this bottom half to one side. I'm actually just going to put it down here on the floor. There is no room on the desk for how big this thing is. So here we go. We've just got the top half of the Battle Sanctum, which in and of itself makes a reasonable terrain piece. As you can see, it's not, it's not too unreasonable to use that on its own. Anyway, what we're going to do is we are going to take some tissue paper and a dry brush. And we're going to take some black Templar. I'm going to add some kind of burn and scorch marks to our piece of terrain. So we're going to do this on the top and on the bottom. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that Black Templar on our dry brush. And then we're just going to stipple most of it off into our tissue paper like that until we get it looking sort of somewhat like that. And we're just going to pick areas where it's all been damaged and we're just going to start stippling this Black Templar onto these areas, just by dabbing away at those broken areas. Now, just be careful with how much of this you use, as you don't want to start layering Black Templar in. But we're looking for that kind of effect, where it just looks a little faded. Just like that. And you can do this kind of any way you please, really. I just find on the kind of on the along the edge of these spires, for example, or spars, I should say, it just looks really effective. Adding that touch of black templar like that, just to make it look like that's really burned away. But you could, for example, on the floors, just add a little bit of this around the corners. Some of you may be thinking you could use a bad and black for this. You could absolutely use a bad and black for this, but using black Templar gives you a much kind of more subtle build up rather than a base or a layer paint, which gives you quite a solid, this is a scuff mark. So what we're going for is kind of build up of scorch marks rather than like a, you know, like a chipping effect like so. So here we are then, when nature takes over, we have some wild woods crossing between game systems to grow within this ruined sanctum. Uh, this is a really, really cool little project, this one, to paint one, two, three, or five buildings 
in 10 hours is roughly what that took. Really, really cool. And of course we have the Triumph of St. Catherine sat right there. Our little Bloody Rose sister in the background there. Morven Val and our Argent Shroud sister in all their glory. It's a really, really fun little project, as I've already said. I mean, it's very, very effective. The primers are doing a lot of the work there, as you can see, but honestly, null and oil. Who'd have thought, eh? Check that out. The battle damage on the battle sanctum. Little burn marks. Really, really, again, just really, really effective little blending effect on that Black Templar on that floor just up there and of course along the sides of the ruined building. Yes, thank you past Josh. This is future Josh now waxing lyrical about his own building painting prowess. I really 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 enjoyed doing this. It was so much fun to get this many buildings done in 10 hours is what it took and honestly the effect is really really surprising the primer is doing a lot of the work there and I'm pretty sure I didn't mention in the video that I also used gray seer primer on the smaller buildings rather than that matte white primer that was just used on the big battle sanctum but my goodness me doesn't it look effective I'm so so pleased if you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here exactly like these awesome folks have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.